terrific movie. And that was Lee Grant's first role in a film and brought her an Academy Award nomination. And I'm very happy to have her here right now next to me. Now, this movie came out, you got your Oscar nomination, and then pow, you got blacklisted. Yeah. When did you find that out, that you were blacklisted? I, I was asked to speak at a memorial for J. Edward Bromberg, who was a very well-known character actor. Who'd been blacklisted. Who had been blacklisted and who I was in a play with. Right. That my husband had written, All You Need Is One Good Break. And he had died of a heart attack. In, in London. After the stress had, of all of this Where he'd gone to try and get away from and it. And try to get a job. He'd try to get yeah. a job. And he had told me, because we'd work in, in stock together, you know, had his heart was hurting, and, and that on American Activities Committee kept calling him to testify. And so I was asked, as a young actress on Broadway, to say something at his memorial. And, and so they had a huge memorial for J. Edward Bromberg at the Edison Hotel. It was packed, thousands of people. And I said that I felt that his death was due to his being harassed by the Un-American Activities Committee. And, and so I went to an actor's equity meeting like a couple of days later, and an actor who was in front of me said, oh, I've seen you made the list. And I said, what list? And I was listed in Red Channels, which was the book where they listed people for speaking at Ron Bruce Memorial. And from that day for 12 years. You were blacklisted. I, I was, oh. yeah. So did all this make you terribly angry? It did, it, it did eventually. Uh, it was a big learning process. I went to college. I mean, it was, you know, not acting college. It was a life college mm -hmm. of who I wanted to be with and who I didn't want it to be with. And I wanted to be with the people who were blacklisted. I respected them. I liked them. I felt close to them. I learned. I learned values. I learned what to stand up for. And it was a great education for me. I heard you speak one time at, 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 when people were talking about the blacklist. And you said something that really stuck with me. You said, in a way, there was a positive thing for you because you said it's the only time in your life you really felt part of a family. People that were like, that were kind of like connected to one another because of the blacklist. You know, that moves me when you, when you say that. Um, and, and you know, one thing that I found that I had when I was a kid is when I saw people being treated unfairly, something in me clicked. That's something I had from childhood. I would think that's not fair, the way this person is treated. It's not fair. And, and that is like something that's in my enzymes or something. When I see something that's not fair, something in me just responds to it. Yes, indeed. Well, we're going to move on right now. Don't go far away. Lee and I are just getting started. Up next, a movie that Lee made almost 20 years after Detective Story, and another film for which he received an Academy Award nomination. It's a movie starring Bo Bridges, directed by Hal Ashby. Good stuff. Tonight on Turner Classic Movies, Lee Grant is disturbed by her son Bo Bridges in The Landlord. Then Grant's husband, Telly Sabalas, may have fathered an illegitimate child in Juana Serra, Mrs. Campbell. And Lee is a cynical friend of Kim Novak in Middle of the Night. Step in.